Today marks two years since the Taliban swept into Afghanistan's capital city of Kabul and seized control of the country. It marked a stunning moment after 20 years of war, billions of dollars spent, and thousands of lives lost. It also led to a desperate scramble as thousands of Afghans raced to the airport desperate to flee the Taliban. But the people who, for people who didn't make it out, they have been forced to live under harsh cultural rules. Rules that set back the progress made over the past two decades. News Nation's Joe Khalil has more for us tonight on the situation in Afghanistan. And Joe, you've just learned today that one lawmaker wants to hear testimony surrounding the bombing at the airport. Yeah, that's right, Elizabeth. The House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall just today, hours ago, sent a letter to the Secretary of Defense. We have obtained that letter here at News Nation. He's asking specifically for one commanding officer who was on the ground in Afghanistan, wants him to come testify because McCall thinks he may have information as to whether the bombing at the Abbey Gate that killed 13 service members could have been prevented. It's been two years since the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, ending what was a 20-year war. Sadly, much of the cultural and security progress made in those 20 years has been erased in the last two under Taliban rule. We knew far ahead that this is a regime that doesn't believe in the rights of women, it doesn't believe in democracy, it doesn't believe in freedom. The last Afghan ambassador to the United States, Adela Ross, says to News Nation that August 15th, 2021, was the day many Afghans lost their hopes and their dreams. Since the pullout, the United Nations Office of Human Rights claims Afghan girls have lost nearly every right they'd won while U.S. forces remained in the country saying girls have been banned from secondary and higher education, amusement parks, pools, gyms, working in NGOs, and virtually all public office. Good morning, good morning. Today, Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the decision to leave Afghanistan was a difficult one, but the right one. We ended America's longest war. For the first time in 20 years, we don't have another generation of young Americans going to fight and die in Afghanistan. And in turn, that has enabled us to even more effectively meet the many challenges uh, of our time. Still, questions remain about how decisions around the pullout were made, particularly around the bombing of Abbey Gate near the Kabul airport. Family members of the 13 American service members killed, like Mark Schmitz, who lost his Marine son, Jared, demanding to know more. We want the, the history books to be written correctly on what really happened over there instead of what uh, is being touted on the media circuits. And, you know, with Biden saying it was an extraordinary success is an absolute spit in our face. Elizabeth, we've been in touch with some of those family members who lost their service members that day. Uh, they have been telling us this, but we've now confirmed that on August 29th, they are going to be here in D.C. for a roundtable discussion about their experiences and what they still want in terms of accountability from the government. I think Elizabeth. a lot of them are still looking for answers. Joe Khalil, thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.